Built-in stability arises because net taxes change with GDP. Remember that taxes reduce incomes and therefore reduces spending. It is desirable for spending to rise when the economy is slumping and vice versa when the economy is becoming inflationary. Automatic stability reduces instability but does not eliminate economic instability. Tax revenues vary directly with the GDP. Income, sales, excise, and payroll taxes all increase when the economy is expanding and all of them decrease when the economy is contracting. Transfer payments like unemployment compensation and welfare payments vary indirectly with the economic business cycles. Unemployment compensation and welfare payments decrease during economic expansion and they increase during economic contractions. The size of automatic stability depends on the responsiveness of changes in taxes to changes in GDP. The more progressive the tax system, the greater the economy's built-in stability. A progressive tax system means the average tax rate rises with GDP. A proportional tax system means the average tax rate remains constant as GDP rises. And a regressive tax system means that the average tax rate falls as GDP rises. However, tax revenues will rise with GDP under both the progressive and the proportional tax systems, and they may rise or fall or stay the same under a regressive tax system. This figure shows built-in stability. Tax revenues, T, vary directly with GDP, and government spending, which is G. It is assumed that government spending is independent of GDP. As GDP falls in a recession, deficits occur automatically and help alleviate the recession. As GDP rises during an expansion, surpluses occur automatically and help offset possible inflation. Another name for the cyclically adjusted budget is the full employment budget. The cyclically adjusted budget measures what the federal budget deficit or surplus would be with existing taxes and government spending if the economy is at full employment. Fiscal policy is neutral when the tax revenues equal government expenditures after adjusting for the reduction of revenues from a recession. The cyclically adjusted budget deficit is zero in year one and year two. Fiscal policy is expansionary when the cyclically adjusted budget deficit is zero one year and there's a deficit the next. Fiscal policy is contractionary when the cyclically adjusted budget deficit is zero year one and is followed by a cyclically adjusted budget surplus the next year. This figure shows the cyclically adjusted deficits in the graph. The cyclically adjusted deficit is zero at the full employment output GDP1, but it is also zero at the recessionary output GDP2 because the $500 billion of government expenditures at GDP2 equals the $500 billion of tax revenues that would be forthcoming at the full employment GDP1. There has been no change in fiscal policy. This figure shows cyclically adjusted deficits. Discretionary fiscal policy as reflected in the downward shift of the tax line from T1 to T2 has increased the cyclically adjusted budget deficit from zero in year three before the tax cut to $25 billion in year four after the tax cut. This is found by comparing the $500 billion of government spending in year 4 with the $475 billion of taxes that would accrue at the full employment GDP 3. Such a rise in the cyclically adjusted budget deficit as a percentage of potential GDP identifies an expansionary fiscal policy. Recognition lag is the elapsed time between the beginning of a recession or inflation and awareness of this occurrence. Administrative lag is the difficulty in changing policy once the problem has been recognized. Operational lag is the time elapsed between the change in policy and its impact on the economy. A political business cycle may destabilize the economy, and election years have been characterized by more expansionary policies regardless of economic condition. Households may believe that the tax reduction is temporary, and they'll save a large portion of their tax cut, which reduces the magnitude of the effect that's desired by the policymakers. State and local finance policies also might offset federal stabilization policies. They're often pro-cyclical because balanced budget requirements cause states and local governments to raise taxes during a recession or cut spending, making the recession possibly worse. 
In an inflationary period, they may increase spending or cut taxes as their budgets head for surpluses. Crowding out may also occur with government deficit spending. It might increase the interest rate and reduce private spending, which weakens or cancels the stimulus of fiscal policy. Some economists oppose the use of fiscal policy, believing that monetary policy, which will come in later chapters, is more effective, or that the economy is sufficiently self-correcting. Most economists support the use of fiscal policy to help push the economy in a desired direction, and the use of monetary policy for more fine-tuning. Economists agree that the potential impacts, positive and negative, of fiscal policy on long-term productivity growth should be evaluated and considered in the decision-making process along with the short-run cyclical effects.